Dismantling a Stuart Victoria steam plant part 4. Time to completely dismantle the boiler and see what's under the cladding. The job starts by removing the boiler bands. There are three large boiler bands that look quite good and they'll look even better when I polish them up. I think when I replace the boiler bands, when I've finished doing what I want to do at the boiler, I'm going to use brass fittings throughout. And by replace, I don't mean a replace with something else, I'm going to use these after I've cleaned them up, along with the nice piece of metal that fits across the top. If you look at the wood on the boiler, you will see a couple of obvious things. One is, underneath the boiler bands, it's a different colour. And that also goes for a piece across the top, which is a different colour, because it's always been covered with a metal strip. The white stuff you can see is metal polish residue. This is always a problem when you use metal polish on pieces of brass that sit against a wooden background. The boiler bands only go down each side and the bottom part of the cladding is cleverly held in place using two specially shaped pieces of brass that are held in place by some more bolts. That's what I'm removing at the moment and once I've done that I will have access to the cladding that's underneath the base. And here it is, equally discoloured underneath the fittings. I'm pausing the video for a special health and safety notice. I need to find out what this material is in between the wood and the boiler. It isn't asbestos, I'm pleased to say. At the side of me, off camera on the floor, is a bucket of water. And had this have been asbestos, I would have immediately submerged it in the bucket of water. This would prevent any asbestos dust from contaminating my workspace. This material would appear to be the modern substitute for asbestos. It's made from a ceramic material. And how do I know this? Because I use this ceramic material frequently on most of my boilers. Also, this material on the boiler doesn't look, taste or smell anything like asbestos. I don't intend to reuse this cladding because it's past its sell-by date and it's a bit marked. Instead, I'm going to reclad the boiler just using some quite thick mahogany strips. To be honest, the cladding on a small steam boiler like this is fairly ineffective as heat insulation because of its small physical size. This is an extract from one of my videos. It's from the Simplex Prairie Tank video series. And it shows me using a large sheet of this asbestos substitute material for lagging the boiler. It is a bit more functional on a locomotive boiler because the cladding is not mahogany, it's normally metal, which would get a little bit too hot if it was touching the copper that the boiler's made from. Back to this boiler, I can see that this is not asbestos because with a wet cloth it's just wiping off, and normally from my experience of cleaning off asbestos, which I have done, is far more difficult to remove than this. In any case, if it was asbestos, I would be doing this underwater with some wire wool. You will notice that there's a lot of water on the bench, and this mainly came out of the boiler, but it's useful to keep my cloth wet to wipe away the asbestos substitute. To be honest, I don't much like handling this stuff either. I think it's a byproduct of china clay, and when you handle it, it feels a bit prickly on your fingers. Probably in about 50 years, the powers that be will find out that this stuff is also lethal. But at my age, by the time that happens, I'll be pushing up the daisies. Now the boiler is clean enough to work with. Casting an experienced eye over the boiler, I'm pretty sure that this is a commercial item. And one of my kind Patreon supporters mentioned that he had one, and it was called a tree tower boiler. I'm going to put this in the acid bath to clean up the inside as well as the outside. Now all the original cladding is completely superfluous. If it looked good I would reuse it, but it doesn't. Before I put the boiler into the acid bath, I'm going to put some blanking plugs in the water gauge fittings and also a blanking plug in the side where the check valves went. What about the top I hear you ask? Well those threads are a good bit coarser than the ones in the water gauge fittings and the check valve fittings. And the acid in my acid bath is very weak. It's Kilrock K Kettle Descaler. The main point of dropping the whole thing into the acid bath is to get rid of any lime scale inside it. I'm having a look at the state of the threads in the top of the boiler and everything's looking good. I'm just poking out a piece of sealant. Time to plug some holes. The threads on these two fittings on the side of the boiler are 5 16 by 32 threads per inch. The smaller one that I'm also going to plug, which holds the check valves, is quarter by 32 threads per inch. 
I always have a good stock of blanking plugs because it takes such a long time to find them or make them if you haven't got them. Here are two blanking plugs fitted into the water gauge blocks and here I'm fitting a blanking plug to the small hole in the side of the boiler. I was quite pleased to see some writing and numbers stamped into part of the boiler shell. This confirms that it is a commercial item and the boiler has an identification number. I'll be performing a hydraulic test on this boiler and once I've done that and it's OK, I will take it over to Simon at the steam workshop and get it tested there. I thought I would use a piece of scotch Bright to clean up the area around the writing just to see what it says. I was also interested to see the working pressure stamped on the side as well, £60 per square inch. I will give this boiler a hydraulic test using my calibrated rig to £120 per square inch which is double working pressure. Now it's time to place the boiler in the acid bath. I don't want to have to put my hand in the acid bath to retrieve it. To lower the part into the acid bath I'm using some silicone rubber tubing as usual. And I've found a use for the bones in there at last. I'm using one of the hands to hold the piece of silicone rubber to stop that from falling into the acid. That's it for this video. All that remains to be done is to replace the lid and I will revisit this tomorrow. Stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.